Hi guys, so today we are here for my first book haul of the year of 2020. These are the books I'm going into the year with new on my shelf and I am so excited about all of them. I feel like, you know, I'm starting starting the year on the right foot. And I do have a bit of everything. I have books I've sent for review, books I bought myself, books that were gifts, and books that I picked up secondhand as well as new. But before we get into the books, I want to thank the sponsor of today's video who I feel like are perfectly apt for what we're going to be chatting about, and that is ShopTagger. So ShopTagger is basically an app or add-on that you can download to your browser, which is particularly apt given the time of year because I find that post Christmas, beginning of the new year, a lot of stores start discounting their books, particularly hardbacks, with the expectation that paperbacks will be coming out in the new year. And that's actually um, how I got this copy of Deathless Girls, which I will talk about more in the book haul. It is a hardback, as you can see, that came out this year, and I managed to get it with £3 off, which is absolutely wonderful because every pound helps, doesn't it, going into a new year. Saving money is something I'm sure a lot of us are aiming for. But once you've downloaded ShopTagger to your browser, you simply need to visit one of your favourite online bookstores and find the books that you're interested in. You can then save them to your shop tagger and sign up for how much discount you would like to be alerted to, whether you want to get alerted to any discount or want to wait for it to be 50% off. You can then create multiple wish lists. So if you are book focused like me, you might have a ebook wish list, you might have a top priority bookish wish list, you might have a school or university bookish wish list. And that's not to mention Shop Tiger's latest feature, which which is that if you use ShopTagger on your desktop, you can also be alerted to discount codes when you're checking out. So if I have a basket full of fun and interesting books I'm interested in reading, and then I get to the checkout and there is the coupon code section and I haven't found one myself, ShopTagger basically scans the internet um, for the coupons out there and will, apl will apply the one that gives you the best discount to your cart. So if like me, you expect to continue buying books online in the new year, but would love to save a little bit of money and have have a place to keep all of your wish lists together, then do click the link in the description box down below and check out ShopTagger because it is the perfect addition to your online shopping. But on that note, let's talk about the books that have recently come into my life. Um, starting with the ones I bought new as opposed to second hand, I will kick off things with Deathless Girls since I just mentioned that. This is by Kieran Millwood Hargreave. This is a young adult historical novel about two sisters who are part of a travelling community but are abducted by a cruel older man who enslaves them in his household and um, it makes him, them serve him and it's like a pretty gruesome horrible life but one of the sisters manages to strike up a friendship and a potential budding romantic relationship with another young woman living in this household so this is also a queer historical YA novel which I'm so excited for it. I've heard amazing things about this book. Everyone really highly praises Kira Millwood Hargreaves' writing style and I've never actually read one of her books before. She's particularly well known for her middle grade um, but is these days, you know, uh, venturing into the older age categories and I am so excited for this book. Plus, I mean, isn't this stunning? I can't get over how beautiful it is. Look at those end papers. This, my friends, is a work of art and completely worth acquiring the hardback for. Beautiful. We then have a book I've already read and that is Women Racing Class by Angela Davis. Um, this is a new Penguin Modern Classics edition which I'm really pleased to see that they've come out with because I've been meaning to read this book for quite some time and when I saw this in 3 for 2 in Blackwells my friend Jill and I decided to both get a copy and buddy read it together which was of course an absolute pleasure and it's been such a fascinating book. You've probably already seen my best books of the year video but if you haven't this was in there and I would recommend checking that out, it'll be linked below in the description box but it's essentially a collection of essays by Angela Davis um, following the lives of black women in the United States from the time of slavery up until the civil rights movement and how all of that ties together Together, and it's so well done, it's so accessible, so important and although it came out in the 80s it's still incredibly relevant. So one I would highly recommend checking out yourself. Then lastly for new books I bought myself I have The Corinthians by Georgia Hare. This was recommended to me or this author was recommended to me by my friend Taylor who I know from talking to recently is planning on returning to booktube so I'll link her channel down below and this is a historical romance novel but it was actually written in the 19. 40s or 50s? Uh, yes, 1940s. I think Georgette here was writing throughout the 30s, 40s, 50s. Um, they are clean, like Regency romance. That's a that's a terminology for romantic literature. I only recently learned because 
This is still early days in my romance journey, but it is what I believe they describe as a clean romance. Um, but it sounds absolutely fantastic. I think it's going to have a lot of the endearing writing qualities that I enjoy in more classic romance novels. But equally, it sounds completely melodramatic and adventure full. It's about a young man who I believe has pressure being put on him to get married because, you know, he's wealthy and expected to kind of carry on the family line when he's walking home one night and witnesses a young woman fleeing from a building down a uh, rope that she's made out of bed sheets and I believe they then go on the run together and build a relationship and it sounds brilliant. Um, I'm also just really excited to read something by Georgette here because she does seem to have incredible reviews on Goodreads from what I'm looked at and she may be a new favourite so that would be exciting. We then have a book I didn't personally buy but is a new purchase and it's this book which is The Division Bell Mystery by Ellen Wilkinson. So Ellen Wilkinson was actually a Labour MP and one of the first ever female MPs in the United Kingdom so obviously this book was written quite a while ago. I think it came out in the 1930s from what I recall and I first heard of it from my friend Jen. Yes, 1932. Jen recently has been reading some of the books in the series, which is the British Library Crime Classics series, um, and found out that this one was written by an, uh, an early woman MP um, of the Labour Party, so she thought I might be interested in it, and she was, of course, correct. And I then also told my mum about it, so we were in a bookshop together, and she fancied reading it, so she has picked it up. She's almost finished reading it. I think she's got like 50 pages left or something. And once she's done with it, I plan on taking taking this back to London with me so I can read it. So it is kind of my book as well and it's definitely a book that I will be reading and I'm super excited about. The crime mystery in this book um, follows a male MP I believe when um, somebody is murdered in the Houses of Parliament and he has to figure out the mystery. But as, but as you may have gathered from my chat about new books there, I have picked up as well a couple of second-hand books and the first one looks brand new. I genuinely don't think anyone ever read this copy. Um, and that is The Wren Hunt by Mary Watson. I found this in a charity shop in Portobello and it was 125 Amazing. And I think I had heard of it before. You know when a title and a cover just looks familiar? And I do obviously see a lot of books floating around the internet so I started peeling off a label there <laughs> and they sort of get into the back of your head but you never really know entirely what they're about. When I read the back of this though I knew I had to pick it up. It sounds like a kind of dark paranormal fantastical thriller. Um, it reads every winter Ren Silk is chased through the forest in a warped version of a childhood game. The boys who hunt her are judges, powerful and frightening pursuers who know nothing of her true identity. If they knew she was an augur, their sworn enemy, the game would turn deadly. But Ren is on the hunt too. Sent undercover as an intern to the Harkness Foundation, enemy headquarters, her family's survival rests on a finding a secret meant to stay hidden. As the enmity between two ancient magics reaches breaking point, Ren is torn between old loyalties and new lies, and trapped in the most dangerous game of her life. I mean, all of that just sounds brilliant. Um, I haven't read any reviews for it, but I'm hoping that it kind of lives up to my expectations. Plus 1.25, can't complain. I then also picked up a secondhand fantasy duology in a um, secondhand bookshop called Armchair Books here in Edinburgh, which is one of my favourite secondhand bookshops if you're ever in Edinburgh. And it is Shape Changers Song by Jennifer Robertson. And this is Omnibus One in the Chronicles of the Chisuli. And this cover, I mean, this this is just the kind of covers and secondhand bookshops I immediately pick up. It's about a race of magical warriors gifted with the ability to assume animal shape at will. For centuries, they had been allies to the king of Homona, treasured champions of the realm, until the king's daughter ran away with the Chisuli liege man and caused a war of annihilation against the Chisuli race. 25 years later, the Chisuli were hunted exiles in their own land, feared for their sorcery, their shape changing. This is the story of Alex, the daughter of the ill-fated union between Homan and Princess and Chisuli warrior and her struggle to master the call of magic in her blood and accept her place in an ancient prophecy she cannot deny. Brilliant. So excited. <laughs> And then before I get on to the review copies I was saying, I have two books that were gifts. So the first one was a gift for my friend Joe for Christmas, and that is The Passion of Artemisia by Susan Reeland. So this is historical fiction about a real historical figure, and that is Artemisia Gentileschi, who was a Baroque painter. And one of the elements of her story that is particularly significant is that she was raped by one of her father's art students, as her father was also an artist, and her trial um, was one of the first ever recorded 
rape trials, the first ever recorded rape trial that we have, you know, um, surviving evidence for. And she's a historical figure and artist I find absolutely fascinating, so I'm so excited to have a book that, although historical fiction will kind of trace her life for me and help me learn a little bit more about her and just immerse me in that story. So this was an amazing find, I'd never heard of it before so I was so incredibly pleased when Jill gifted it to me. And then I have a little collection of poetry that my mum bought me and this is Girlhood, well hashtag Girlhood by Kat Hepburn. I think my mum went to an event, I'm not sure what it was for but she said there was a few young women poets there and um, performing some of their poetry and then selling their books after and she wanted to pick me up both poets collections but one of them had sold out um, so she only managed to get me one um, but she said that this young woman was an incredible um, performer and poet and I've read a couple of the poems in here already and I definitely think she writes in a style that I'm going to enjoy. It's, and I'm thinking that tomorrow, which is the 1st of January, aka New Year's Day, I'm, be, I'm going to be having a super chill day around the house. I will probably just sit down and read this whole collection and it'll be the first book of the year, which I think would be really, really nice and then you'll obviously get a review for it at the end of January. But I thought this was a really lovely, thoughtful gift from my mum. We then, like I mentioned, have some review copies. Now the first one was such a treat. This was more of a Christmas present from a publishing house than necessarily a review copy, but I am so pleased to have it. And this is the Dushoom official cookbook, which is published by Bloomsbury. If you're not familiar, Dushoom is a restaurant here in the UK that has been gradually expanding. Um, I first came across it in London, but they have one in Edinburgh now. And I am a big fan, like I love Dushoom's food. It's incredibly tasty. I love going there for breakfast or dinner, you know, big fan, big fan. And this is their recipe book, but what is so beautiful about this is it's not just a recipe book, it's also the history of the Irani cafes, which is the like um, traditional cafes that Dushoom takes its inspiration from. Also the history of this kind of food and the Dushoom restaurant itself. So I just think that's absolutely lovely and it's so gorgeous inside. So for example, here is some pages all about um, Dushoom and its history. But then of course we have recipes starting at sort of like early morning food to uh, sides, oh my god, the okra fries um, in Dushoom are incredible. There's beautiful, beautiful photography as well. I'm just getting to all the photography, but it is gorgeous. Oh my goodness, it's making me hungry. Um, but <laughs> it's such a gorgeous book. Like, I am so pleased to have this on my bookshelf. I feel like this is like a proper coffee table book as well as a cookbook. And I've already made, I mean, it was a really simple thing that I made from here. I've not had it for very long. Um, but it tasted very good. We then do have some fiction though. And the first one is A Scandal in Battersea by Mercedes Lackey. This is the first book of the Elemental Master Series. And as you may guess from the cover, this is like a fantastical paranormal retelling of the Sherlock Holmes mysteries by Sir Arthur Conan Doyle. Although I don't know if Mercedes Lackey makes up her own mysteries in these books, but it's about the original characters. Uh, book one says, Christmas is a very special time of year. It is special for psychic Nan Killian and medium Sarah Lyon White and their ward Suki, who are determined to celebrate it properly. Their friends, Dr. John Watson and his wife Mary, both elemental masters, find great delight in the season. It is special to others for a very different reason. So, I did know this actually, the main characters in these books aren't like Sherlock Holmes. They are these women living in the late 1800s in London um, who are friends with Dr Watson and his wife and they are solving crimes so okay they're probably not solving the same crimes as Sherlock Holmes. But anything with like a hint of Sherlock Holmes in it and even better that it's got all these fantastic strong female lead characters is something I am going to be all over. Obviously. <laughs> like this basically combines so many of the things I love, you know, strong female leads, historical fiction, fantasy, and Sherlock Holmes and Dr. Watson mysteries. I mean, gosh, this just sounds brilliant. The reason they sent me book one in this series is because the most recent book has just come out and the series is already about 14 or 16 books long, which is absolutely incredible. It means I've got so many wonderful books to get my teeth into in the coming year if I like book one, which I'm sure I will. I also hear amazing things about Mercedes Lackey. She's written loads and loads and loads of beloved fantasy novels. So yeah, so pleased to have this. Thank you so much to Titan for sending it to me. And then I have three books that were sent to me by Pam McMillan. The first one I'm sure a lot of you will recognize and that is Wilder Girls by Rory Power. This book is inspired by Lord of the Flies. I don't know if it's like a retelling of Lord of the Flies, but it takes the Lord of the Flies concept and kind of reworks it. So it's also, I believe, kind of YA horror, which sounds brilliant. And it's about a group of students at a um, all girls school who start to become infected with a strange new virus. First their teachers die, 
First their teachers died one by one, then it began to affect the students, turning their bodies strange. And left to fend for themselves on their island home, the girls don't dare wander outside the school's fence, where the tox has made the woods wild and dangerous. So basically they have to kind of survive alone and together and I've heard completely mixed things about this like I think it's a bit of a marmite I think it either is or isn't for you I know Books and Lala absolutely loves it though so I am here to give it a shot I do like a little bit of like creepy um kind of contemplative horror so I'm hoping that this will work for me but we will see I then have a fantasy novel which is Ash Princess by Laura Sebastian this is book one in a fantasy series and I recently saw Ash Princess come up on a list of books that were recommended as similar to The Cruel Prince, I believe. And you'll have seen that video and I'm sure this was one of the books on there, but obviously I didn't own it. And um, so I was really grateful to Emma over at Book Break, um, which is the Pan McMillan YouTube channel, for sending me this because it sounds absolutely up my street. It says, Theodosia was six when her mother, the Fire Queen, was murdered before her eyes. Ten years later, Theo has learned to survive under the relentless abuse of the invading Kaiser and his court as the, ridic as the ridiculed Ash Princess. But when the Kaiser denies her last hope of rescue, Theo vows revenge. Forced to make impossible choices and unable to trust even those who are on her side, Theo will have to decide how far she's willing to go to save her people and how much of herself she's willing to sacrifice to become Queen. Brilliant. I mean, that's enough for me. Hopefully it's enough for you. <laughs> and then lastly, I have a book that was sent to me by Del Rey, which is an imprint of Penguin Random House, and that is The Grace Year by Kim Liggett. And this sounds so interesting. I think it's a bit of a feminist dystopian. It sounds a little bit different from a lot of the feminist dystopians I see these days and is a genre I feel like I kind of read a lot of. So definitely look for something unique in and this does sound like that. It's about Tierney James. Um, she lives in an isolated village where girls are banished at 16 to the northern forest to brave the wilderness and each other for a year. So again, maybe kind of Lord of the Flies vibe. They must rid themselves of their dangerous magic before returning purified and ready to marry if they're lucky. And that sounds a bit like a metaphor for kind of like young girls um, being kind of turned into ladies that behave a specific way for their husband. It is forbidden to speak of the grace here, but even so, every girl knows that the coming year will change them if they survive it. And then yeah, it does say that it's set in a ruthless patriarchal society where the most a young woman can hope for is to be chosen as a wife. Um, so it's actually described as more of a feminist thriller, um, which I think sounds really really interesting I think the combination of different elements there sounds really interesting and I think it could be incredibly um, poignant and subversive so I am hoping that it lives up to my expectations it's also another beautiful edition so was really pleased to have been sent that but those are all the physical books I have to show you I do want to mention one ebook lastly before I head off and that is The Empress of Zaite by Effie Calvin this literally came out yesterday and I didn't even know it was coming out I don't know how I didn't know it was coming out maybe um, the release date hadn't had um, lots of press around it but it is book four in the um, Queens of Inthia series which was one of my favourite series I read in 2019, there is three books in the series. There's now four books in the series, but there was three. I read all three last year, and I now have book four, and I've already started it. So that's probably going to be the first book I finish in 2020, because no doubt I'll read some more of it tonight and then finish it tomorrow. And this book series is a queer fantasy series set in a high fantasy world where everything that could come under the LGBTQ plus spectrum is accepted and that is just wonderful. You need that in literature sometimes. Um, you kind of need to imagine a world where that's possible, even if it's a fantasy world. Um, but this book, I believe, from the kind of 10% I read last night, follows a new set of characters. So book one in this series followed a arranged marriage between two princesses. Then in book two, we follow a minor goddess and a uh, warrior. Uh, book three returns to the princesses from book one, although the characters from book two do become minor characters in that. And then in book four, we are following a future empress from another kingdom or empire that has quite a tense relationship with our original kingdom and who we actually met in book two, if that makes sense. So the character is not entirely new to the world, but she's never been a protagonist before and it's going to be her story and I think her romance with another woman because that has happened in every single other one of the books in the series and it's one of my favourite elements. So I don't think I'm wrong in speculating that it's also part of this. 
and I'm so excited. Cannot, cannot wait to read this book. Love this world, love the characters, love Effie Calvin's writing. So that was such a treat last night when I found out it had just come out on Kindle and I downloaded it. But those are all of the books that I have acquired of late. Again, thank you so much to Shop Tiger for sponsoring this video. Their support is incredibly helpful when it comes to creating content for all of you guys. So do check out their link in the description box down below. And until next time, happy reading. I'll see you all again soon. Bye guys.